The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Hello, beloved. This is Brother Leonard Ford, and I'm inviting you to join me and my wife, Jessie, as we celebrate 43 years of preaching hope and bringing deliverance. The celebration will be November the 4th through the 8th right here at 9101 Lou Drive in Little Rock, Arkansas at 7 p.m. each night. That's right. November 4th through the 8th, 7 p.m. 9101 Lou Drive. It's the celebration. Won't you join us? Praise the Lord. Looking to see you here. Move of God, a move of God is on the way. I know that I know that I move of God. A move of God is on the way. I feel it in the atmosphere. A move of God is on the way. You got to believe it. You got to decree it. A move of God is on the way. You got to open up your mouth and say those things that you want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. Come on and say it. A move of God. A move of God is on the way. Just think it. Just believe it and you have whatever way. you say, whatever you speak and a decree move of God is on, on the way. way. A move of God is on the way. A move yeah, of God yeah, is on yeah. the way. A move of God is on your a way. Move of God is on you your ought way. to believe it. You ought to decree it. A move yeah. of God. with me. This is my Bible. It is the mind of God clothed in my vocabulary. It reveals the will of God to me. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. I will hear the word of God tonight. I will believe and receive. The good things that God has for me because this is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Therefore I, Therefore, I know 
when I have the word of God on my situation, I have God on my situation. Therefore, my situation must change in Jesus' name. I, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of God, in the wisdom of men, rather, but in the power of God. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but that your faith to stand in the power of God. This is the only time I'm going to have you do this. Look at somebody and ask them this question. Say, neighbor, do you have faith in the power of God? Look back at them and say, I do. That's what I want to preach tonight. I've got faith in the power of God. I've got faith. I've got confidence. I've got reliance. I've got credence. I depend on the power of God. The word power in every scripture that I'm going to read tonight is the word dunamis. So it talks about an inherent ability, a capability, a capacity, ability to perform anything. It denotes power to work, power to carry something into effect. It denotes power in action. Dunamis is strength, ability, power. Universally, dunamis is inherent power residing in a thing. That's why I showed you he was teaching, Paul was preaching. There's a power in the word. The word of God is, God, is, is so potent, it's filled with power. But it's kind of like a it's kind of like a pecan. It's in a shell. You gotta crack that shell. And, and some of us can't can't get past this veil of the flesh. Can't, can't step out of the realm of carnality to engage that power. It's residing the thing by virtue of his nature. It, it's, it, it's this power that one exerts or puts forth, specifically the power for working miracles. God's power is a miracle working power. And a miracle is something you can't do on your own. Your education can't do it. Your conditioning can't do it. Your training can't do it. Only God is beyond nature. It can't do it in the, in the laboratory. I mean, it takes God to do a miracle. So I've got faith in the miracle working ability of God. I've got faith in God's miracle working capacity. Now people in church when everything's going well and they're feeling real good, they'll say I do too. But just let a pain hit their body. Just let them get one diagnosis. I was listening to the man of God this morning as he was teaching us and he told a story, amen, a testimony about when a woman, amen, had got a report from the doctor that she had cancer and then they wanted to know if he would come and pray for her. So he went up to pray for the woman and when he got there, they was already, amen, just deciding who going to raise the kids. He was dispersing the children, making out the obituary, getting the program ready. And she just got the report on cancer. And he said, the Holy Ghost told him to put everybody in the room out. How I many know preachers, you got to be bold in this hour? Because you walk into an atmosphere, clouded, doubt, crying, boo-hooing like J.R.'s house. You got to put all the mourners on the body there. And I want you to know, Jesus walked in there and said, she ain't dead, she just sleep. They want to laugh, and he put them out. So when the man of God walked in there, God told him to put everybody out. He put them all out. And then when he put them out, God said, now tell her she don't even have cancer. 
She ain't even got cancer. The doctor said you got cancer. God said you don't have cancer. See, that's what I'm talking about. We don't just want some booger coming out here religiously. Well, we 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 gonna take the doctor at his word and we just going, well, well, we just have you got your will made out, do you got your life insurance paid up? We what well, it's over. We just letting you die because the big seat. No, no. See, he in the spirit. And God speaks to him and says, she does not have cancer. He looks at her and said, now, God told me to tell you, you don't have cancer. She's like, really? Huh? I ain't got cancer. You want to be relieved, but, 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 but the doctor said. But they did the test. They did, but they diagnosed me. In other words, they know more than you. You just a preacher. You ain't took no blood. You ain't took no x-ray. You, ain't, you just come in there talking about, put all my folk out and then tell me this. I mean, you know, some folk would get off that bed dancing, and she, I don't know how to process that. But the next morning, the doctors came in the room and told her, we misread the test. You don't have cancer. Come on here. I'm trying to tell you, what I told you that for, there wasn't no healing because there wasn't nothing to heal. I'm just trying to tell you we can get one report and the whole family go crazy. But we need to get the report of the Lord in spite of what the doctor said. I have faith in the power of God. History might have said this. Medical science might say this. But the power of God is present to restore. The power of God is present to change it all. The power of God is always present in every room right now where there's a sick person. There's enough power to set them free. In every room right now where there's a corpse laying on a slab. There's enough power to raise the dead. But somebody got to have faith in the power of God in this hour and make a decision I heard what the doctor said. I heard what the nurse said. I read what medical science had to say. I even read medical history. But I came to tell you I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts. And I see the power of God changing things. Folks born lame from their mother's womb, they never walked. But when the word was preached, they leaped like a heart. I came to tell you tonight the power of God is present. Do you have faith in the power of God. We better go to Ephesians. Y'all, I don't know about the power of God because in my church, we don't never experience it. Ephesians 3. I have faith. I have confidence in the power of God. When you let the power of God trump the x-ray, when you let the power of God trump the specialists, when the specialists come in and tell you this is impossible, you just begin to see God specializes <laughs> in things impossible. They might think you done lost it. I ain't losing. I heard what you said. I just don't agree with you. I believe God. See, we we uh, see we like to say stuff in church. Uh, we we can get amen after amen corner in church. But on that room when they gave you the diagnosis this time. When it's your chart they put up there and they show you what look like your lungs and one of them collapsed and the other is cloudy. Oh, Jesus. Why you let this happen to me? Lord, I serve you to the best of my ability. That ain't no faith. That's called whining. Ephesians 3.19, Ephesians 3.19, Ephesians 3.19, and the Bible says to know the love of Christ, which what? Passive knowledge. They inject the word so right there. So that you might be filled with what? Oh my God, St. John 1 and 16 said we are of his fullness of all we receive. And then Paul picks it up here and says that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Oh my God, what? According to, in conjunction with the power. Pause right there. What power? The fullness of God that you have access to the fullness of God. The fullness of God is what you feel with. And by the fullness of God in you, God is able to do according to the fullness of God. The power of God. The dunamis of God. The miracle working ability of God is on the inside of you. And we got to understand that in this hour. I've seen people come to the altar with lupus. I remember a teacher came. Hallelujah. She had been diagnosed with lupus. And they told her that they was going to have to take her out the classroom. But she wasn't ready to quit teaching. Not because she was too young to retire. But because she felt like that was a calling on her life. To be with them children in the classroom. And she came to church that morning. 
I wasn't preaching. I was sitting up on the pulpit. You know, back in the day, all the preachers had to sit upstairs. So I was sitting up there, and all of a sudden, the pastor came to me and said, there's a lady down here that's got lupus, and I want you to pray for her. God told me if you pray for her, he'll heal her. Well, I agree with that. And I went down to her, and I looked her right in the eyes, and I told her, God is going to give you a miracle today. Now, I didn't just tell her that, amen, just to psych her out, but from the pulpit to the floor, that's what God spoke to me. And I want you to know I laid hands on her in the name of Jesus, and I didn't speak to her, but I spoke to lupus. I said, lupus, in the name of Jesus, you trespassing on God's property. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and I command you in the name of Jesus, leave here now. Power of God hit her. She hit the floor. A week later, she came back with a report, another report, a medical report from the same doctors in the same hospital. We don't know what happened, but when we check your blood this week, we don't find nothing in it. I came to tell you that's the power of God. You can't do, you can't give no individual credit for that. That's the power of God. That's why I came to tell you tonight, I got faith in the power of God. I don't care what the diagnosis is. Every symptom you feel is real. Every pain you feel hurts. It is a pain. But I came to tell you, y'all know what stain remover is? I came to talk about pain remover. The very power of God. The dunamis of God. The miracle working ability of God. And you got to make a decision. I ain't going to just talk about it. I ain't going to just sing about it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to trust it. I'm going to lay hold on it. Because I came to tell you, you say it's a game changer, baby. It's a lifesaver. You can make up your mind tonight. Come what will or may. But with the power of God, I choose to stay because he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think according to the power that's working in me. Well, I decided to give him a praise so I can activate that power because I found out when I praise him, that power, praise is a trigger. Praise is a switch. Praise is a nozzle. Praise is a release valve. When I begin to magnify God, all of a sudden, something down inside of me begins to rise up. They used to sing a song, spring up, oh well, inside of me. I came to tell you tonight, I have faith in the power of God. Yes, Abba. Hello, beloved. This is Brother Leonard Ford, and I'm inviting you to join me and my wife, Jessie, as we celebrate 43 years of preaching hope and bringing deliverance. The celebration will be November the 4th through the 8th right here at 9101 Lou Drive in Little Rock, Arkansas at 7 p.m. each night. That's right. November 4th through the 8th, 7 p.m. 9101 Lou Drive. It's the celebration. Won't you join us? Praise the Lord. Looking to see you here. Mm. Exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think, but it's according to something. It's according to the power that's active, not the power that's dormant, but the power that's active. See, do you understand? You got a dynamo in you. Do you realize the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you? There's enough power living in you. Resurrection power is in you. And the devil trying to make you wither away like a prune. You got to let the devil know my youth is renewed like the eagle. I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to rise again. I wait on the Lord and my strength shall be renewed. He satisfied my mouth with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagle. Well, you know, brother, when you hit the big six oh, then things start going up. No, that's, that's just middle age, baby. You got to know my youth is renewed like the eagle. You just, now you just in denial. You know you're old and you can't do what you used to do. See, you done bought a lie, but I got faith in the power of God. Don't tell me about no 60 when Moses was 120 walking up the side of a mountain. Joshua was 110 walking up the side of a mountain. Caleb was 85. They say I'm as strong now as I was when I was 45. Don't talk to me about none of that, baby, because I got faith in the power of God. If God did it for Moses, God did it in Joshua. God did Caleb, I'm next. You can sit down if you want to. You can retire if you want to. I'm too fired to retire. Come on here. You got to understand something here tonight. The very power of God is alive right now. Yes, Shabbat. Get it, Emotion. 
Ephesians 3.20 in the Amplified Bible says, Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out. Remember, his dunamis was the ability to carry a thing out, carry it into effect, carry out his purpose, and do super abundantly far above, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. This you in Ephesians, go to chapter 1. I'm just trying to tell you the stuff is in you. The stuff is in you. Pastor Lindsay used to tell us about the rooster and the mockingbird and how the mockingbird would come out and sing every morning and all the hens would gather around to listen to the mockingbird sing and all the rooster could do was crow. So one morning the rooster got up a little early, went out and ate that mockingbird and all of a sudden that rooster went to singing and then he just came around and said, we didn't know you could sing like that. He said, I got the stuff in me now. Well, I came to tell you, you got the stuff in you now. You got the Holy Ghost in you now. You got the power of God in you now. Let the devil know. I got it in me now. I'm filled with it now. I'm full of it now. It resides on the inside of me. Something down inside of me is telling me to go ahead. When the devil say quit, something down inside of me is telling me to rise up and walk when the devil says sit down and die when I put my hands on my hip let my backbone slip and tell the devil zip your lip, pack your grip and take a trip cause I'm here to stay and I ain't giving up no ground somebody gotta get faith in the power of God here tonight cause God's power is available to set the captives free beloved that includes you and me Ephesians chapter 16, I mean chapter 1, verse 16, Paul talking to the church, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I mean, know some people got 20 and 20 and can't see nothing. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Now watch this. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is, here it is, the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. Watch this. According to the working of his mighty power which he wrought or which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Wait a minute. What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places? Do y'all remember reading in the book of Luke when they accused Jesus of casting out demons by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil? But Jesus said, hallelujah, he said, I cast out demons with the finger of God. Casting out demons, they number a pinky work. He said, if I cast out demons with the, with the finger of God, he said, then the whole kingdom has come nigh you. Well, I came to tell you, when he raised him from the dead, he used exceeding great, mighty power, and that's the power that's on the inside of us. Because Romans 8 and 11 lets us know the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, quick making full of life our mortal body. You got to let the devil know when they tell you when the doctor tell you you got the whooping cough. You can tell the devil I also got the Holy Ghost and he gonna quicken my body and whooping cough you about to take a flight. You got to let the devil know when they tell you you got pneumonia. Say devil I got the Holy Ghost and the power is already in me. I don't have to go outside. I ain't got to go to the drugstore to get nothing to kill this. I got the, the flu killer on the inside inside of me. Verse 21, for far, he said him in heavenly places, far above all principality and power 
and might. Read it like this. Far above all principality, all power, all might, all dominion, and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in the one that's coming, in the next age. And he'll put all things under his feet. I don't know about you, but if you his body, you his feet, everything under you too. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Oh my God. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now that's the third time we didn't see this fullness of God. But God's able to do exceeding, exceeding, amen, this hoop of ballot. And it means, it's a transitive word that means to surpass in throwing. To throw over or beyond anything. In other words, whatever he brings up, God said, I can go past that. Ain't no wall that can stop him. Ain't nothing that can stop God. Transitively, it means to surpass, exceed, excel, throw beyond the usual mark. See, that's what, you know, you got people, they got faith to a point. They, but he said, I can go beyond the normal spot. God's power, God's ability. See, when they look you in the face and tell you, ain't no hope, yes, it is. My hope is in the scriptures. My hope is in Christ. My hope is in the word of the living God because faith is the substance of things hoped for. I get my expectation of God. And because my expectation comes from God, I just go to the word because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the devil can't overcome this word in you the entrance of his word gives you light the bible said there was a man came by the name of John he came from God to bear witness of that light he was not that light light. He came to bear witness of that light, which was the true light, the light of every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and they received him not, but to them that believed on him. He gave them power to become the sons of God. They were, listen here, the power that they were born. Hello, beloved. This is Brother Leonard Ford, and I'm inviting you to join me and my wife, Jessie, as we celebrate 43 years of preaching hope and bringing deliverance. The celebration will be November the 4th through the 8th right here at 9101 Lou Drive in Little Rock, Arkansas at 7 p.m. each night. That's right, November 4th through the 8th, 7 p.m., 9101 Lou Drive. It's the celebration. Won't you join us? Praise the Lord. Looking to see you here. They were born not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but they were born of God. Anybody born of God in here? Well, I came to tell you, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I got faith in the power of God. I got faith in the ability of God. You got to make a decision. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I remember George Mueller had an orphanage. Over 2,000 children. They came to him and said, Mr. Mueller, we got a dilemma. He said, what's wrong? So we got 2,000 hungry children and we can't feed them. George Mueller looked at him and said, what you mean you can't feed the children? He said, I just know from personal inventory taken. That you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640 91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated. P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.